Hi all and welcome to this JavaScript tutorial series to recreate the 1976 Atari game Breakout. Breakout is basically comprised of a small paddle which the player can move left or right, and the goal is to bounce a small white ball off that paddle in order to smash the bricks up above. In this video we're going to focus on creating the paddle and the ball. So go ahead and download this template if you haven't done so already. So first of all let's set up some game parameters. They can be represented as constants, so const height will equal 550, that's in pixels. We'll also need some derived dimensions. Const width will equal say 90% of height, so height times 0.9. Next we'll need to set up our game canvas, set up the game canvas. Now the canvas is what we draw on, what we draw our graphics on. So it's just a variable, var canv will equal, we can create it in code by going document.createElement, it's just an HTML element, and in quotes, canvas. We can set the width and height here, so canv.width will equal our width, canvas.height, canv.height will equal our height, and we'll also have to append it, we'll have to attach it to our HTML document by going document.body.appendChild, and then all we have to do is pass that variable canv. Next we need to get the context, so set up the context. The context provides us with methods to draw on the canvas. So we can grab that from the canvas, so var ctx context will equal canv.getContext, and in quotes we need 2D. Next we'll have to set up our game loop. Set up the game loop. We'll be handling this slightly differently to what we have previously. Previously we've called the method setInterval, but there is a more modern way of handling animation now, and that's through the method requestAnimationFrame. Apparently it runs a lot better. So we'll need a couple of variables here. var time delta, that's the difference between this frame and last frame, and time last, which will be used to calculate the delta. So that's called request animation frame. It takes a callback, which is just a function name, so we can call that loop. Let's create that function. So function loop, it has one parameter, it basically is the current time in milliseconds, so we'll call that time now. Uh, we'll have to set up this time last initially because currently it's undefined. So we can do that by going if not time last, that means it's undefined or null. Well, we'll set it. Time last will equal time now. Okay, that'll only run once, the first time that this loop function is run. Next we'll need to calculate the time difference. So time delta will equal time now minus time last. So initially that will be zero, won't it? And then we have to set the time last to equal our time delta, uh, time now. After that, we can call our update functions, passing the time delta in order to calculate uh, position movements and so on. And then the draw functions, we'll do that later. And finally, as it is, this current loop function will only call once. Request animation frame only calls this once. So in order for this to call multiple times to get the free flowing animation, we'll need to call the next loop. Call the next loop simply by going request animation frame loop. That's called recursion. I'm just thinking that we'd probably want time delta to be in seconds, so how about we divide time now minus time last, which is currently in milliseconds, we'll divide that by 1000. That's to get uh, seconds. Uh, now let's draw the background, so we'll create a function called draw background. Background. 
Uh, we'll need a color for the background, so how about just under our derived dimensions, we have some colors. Well, they'll all be constants as well. So constant color background will equal black. And we can go down and create this draw background method. So function draw background. And all that will do is uh, draw a rectangle effectively over the canvas. So we can go context.fill style. This will set the color first. Fill style will equal color background. And then we can go context fill rectangle, which will draw a filled rectangle uh, from the top left, which is 0, 0, to the width and height. So the width will be the canvas.width, canvas.width. And the height will be the canvas.height. Let's give that a go. There we go, we have a black background. Next, let's draw our walls. So let's just write a function named draw walls. We'll implement that soon. Take a look at our picture. Uh, there's a wall on the left, the top, and the right hand side of the game. So how about we represent that as a path using stroke? So we'll need a wall thickness, head up to our derived dimensions. We'll create a constant called wall, and it'll be based on our width. How about width divided by 50? Uh, we'll need a color. How about gray? Wall, color wall equals gray. And we'll need to set our line width. That can be done on the context. So where we set up the context, just go context dot line width, and that will equal wall, the thickness of our wall. Uh, head back down to where we wrote this draw walls function. Let's create that now. Function draw walls. We'll have to set the color first. So context dot uh, stroke style will equal color wall. Uh, we'll need to begin our path, context.begin path. And the first thing we should do is move to a point. So context.move to, that's our initial point. So that can be the lower left corner. It'll be slightly in because of the thickness of the wall. It'll be actually half the thickness of the wall. So let's create a variable, let uh, half wall, we'll call it h wall equal wall times 0.5. So move to the lower left, which will be half wall in from the side, in from the X position, and it'll be the height of the canvas as the Y position. Then we'll need to draw a line to the top left. So context line two, the top left will be H wall, H wall. Then we'll have to do a line to the top right. So the X position will be the width of the screen minus the H wall. And the Y position will be the H wall. And then finally, the lower right hand side, the lower right hand corner will be width minus H wall, and then the height of the screen. To finalize all of that, we just go context.stroke to draw the stroke. Let's give it a go. There we go, we have a grey wall going around the outside, except down the bottom. Good. Next, let's draw the paddle. So first of all, let's create the uh, height and width of the paddle. So go up to derived dimensions, create a variable, sorry, a constant called paddle h, paddle height, and that will be based, well, let's say it's equal to the thickness of the wall. The paddle width, paddle w, will equal, say, five times the height. So paddle height times five. We'll need a color. So color paddle will be white. How about we represent the paddle as an object? So let's create some variables here. So under where we set up the context, let's create some game variables. VAR paddle. And we'll call, we'll create that in a new game function. So start a new game, which we'll definitely use later. So just create a very, uh, sorry, a function named new game. 
head down the bottom. Let's set that up. Function new game. So essentially what we want to do is be able to go paddle equals new paddle. So let's go down and create that function. So function paddle, we'll need to give it a width. So this dot w will equal that constant that we created, paddle w. We'll need a height, uh, that'll equal paddle h. Uh, we'll also need an x and y position. So the x position will be halfway across the screen, so this will be its starting position. So that'll be the canvas dot width divide by two. Its y position, this dot y, will be the height, but we don't want it exactly down the bottom of the screen. We want some buffer underneath it, don't we? Some space underneath it. So it'll be the uh, canvas dot height uh, minus, say, this dot height times three. So there's some amount of space beneath it. And its velocity, it'll only be moving in the x direction. So we only need an xv. We're not going to move this paddle up and down. So this dot xv will equal zero initially. Now we need to draw the paddle. So just in our loop function, under where we draw the walls, draw paddle. Let's create that function underneath draw background there. Function draw paddle. We need to set the color first, so son, uh, context dot fill style will equal color paddle, and we just need to draw a filled rectangle here. So context dot fill rectangle. Its x position will be the paddle's x position, but remember that represents the center of the paddle, so we'll have to subtract half the width of the paddle. So paddle dot width times zero point five. Uh, the y position will be the paddle dot y minus half its height, so paddle dot h times 0 0.5, and the width is just the paddle dot width, and the height is just the paddle dot h, paddle dot height. Let's give that a go. There we go, a nice little paddle down the bottom. Let's give our uh, paddle some movement, so let's create a game parameter called paddle speed, paddle underscore SPD say, and how about we make it uh, a fraction of screen width per second. So let's just say 0.7, so that will be defined as a fraction of screen width per second, so that means it'll cross 70% of the screen in one second. We'll need to add some event listeners to detect key presses, so our left and right arrow for example. So just under where we start a new game, let's uh, set up some event listeners. Document.add event listener. It requires a type, which will be the key down. And what function does it call? It will call, we'll just make it the same name, key down. We'll need another one for detecting key up. Yep, key up create a function called key up. Let's go down and create those functions, so just under where we draw everything. Function key, uh, key down, it takes an event as a parameter. Let's switch between the events key code, so switch event dot key code. The key code for left arrow is 37. So case 37, that's left arrow key. And what do we want to do? We want to move paddle left. So let's just create a function name called say move paddle. And the parameter, well we could give a boolean here, for example false equals left, true equals right, but there's also the stop state, so how about we create a definition after. So here we'll have direction dot left, just need to break there. And we need to do a similar thing for the right arrow. So that'll be case 39 for right. Right arrow move paddle right and direction dot right. We need to do a similar thing for the key up function. So just copy that. 
key up, which also takes an event. We'll switch between the event key code. Uh, the left arrow, so when they release the left arrow, we expect to stop, don't we? So stop moving. Uh, the, when they release the right arrow, we also expect them to stop moving. So we can just flow through here. So right arrow, stop moving. And we can just go move paddle direction dot say stop. Let's head up the top and create that constant direction. So just under where we define our colors, let's create some definitions. So const direction, it'll just equal an object essentially. So curly braces, we'll need our directions, left followed by a colon, and just give them an index. So zero for left, right will be one, and stop will be two. Now we need to head down and create our move paddle uh, method, this one here. So just under our key up function there, function move paddle, it takes direction as a parameter. So we need to switch between that those directions. So switch direction, case direction left. Uh, we just want to modify the XV of our paddle, don't we? So we can go paddle.xv will equal minus, we could calculate the speed here, or we could probably, a better option would be to use a property on paddle, because it could change over time. So let's just go minus paddle.spd, break. So we can set that up down here in our paddle object. So this.spd will equal our paddle speed, that's our constant, multiplied, remember that's a, a fraction of screen width, so multiplied by width, so that'll be in pixels per second, right? Uh, for our right direction, we'll need right and we'll need stop as well, won't we? So for the right direction, it'll be positive paddle speed, and for stop, it'll just equal zero, we'll set it to nothing. To get our paddle moving, we'll have to go up to our loop function again, and just under where we've got update here, we'll have to create a function called update paddle. We'll have to pass the time delta, that's important because we need it to, in order to calculate how far we should move. So let's go down and create this update paddle, which takes a delta. So just under new game here, function update paddle takes a delta in seconds. So all we have to do is modify our paddle's x direction. So paddle.x plus equals paddle.xv. Now that's in uh, pixels per second, so we just need to multiply that by our delta. Uh, let's give that a go. So I'm pushing left, oh yep, there we go, left and right are working well. The only problem is that we can go through the wall, so we'll have to fix that up. Let's do that now. So, stop paddle at wall, at walls. So if the paddle's x position, paddle.x is less than the wall position on the left hand side, but we have to take into consideration the paddle width, so we'll have to add half the paddle's width. So paddle.w times 0.5. Uh, if all of that, then we'll need to set the paddle x to that position. We don't want it to go any further left, so paddle.x will equal all of that. Similarly for the right hand side, so else if the paddle's x position is greater than the width of the canvas, so canvas.width minus the wall's thickness minus half the paddle's width, so paddle.width times 0.5, then we simply want, it, want to set it to that, so copy that and change the greater than symbol to an equals. Let's give that a go. Moving left, yep, we stop there. Moving right, we stop at the right. Good, it seems to be working well. Now let's go up the top and set up our ball. So in the same way that we've got a paddle speed, we may as well set a ball speed here. So constant 
ball speed will equal say 0.5 as a fraction of screen width. So that'll be the starting ball speed. It'll change during the game. Starting ball speed as a fraction of screen width per second. We'll also need a ball size just here. What could be the size for the ball? Ball size, probably the same size as the wall. That would be okay. Ball size equals wall. We'll need a color. Color ball will equal white. Let's declare the ball's variable. It will also be an object similar to the paddle. So inside our new game, we can just simply go ball will equal new ball. So in the same way that we've uh, set up paddle, let's copy that. Function ball. This dot width will equal the ball size. This dot height will also equal the ball size. It's a small square. The X position will be based on the paddle position because we want the ball to start the game sitting on top of the middle of the paddle. So the X position will equal the paddle dot X. This dot Y will equal the paddle dot Y minus half the height of the paddle. So paddle dot height divided by two. And we'll also have to subtract half the height of the ball. So minus ball minus this dot height divided by two. Uh, this dot speed will be the ball speed times the width. The XV will be zero. We also need a YV. So YV will also equal zero. In the same way that we've drawn the paddle, we'll draw the ball. So draw paddle, draw ball. This is now loop. Head down to draw paddle. It'll be very similar, so copy that. Function draw paddle, function draw ball. The only difference is that we'll need to change the color to color ball. And we'll need to change update ball paddle.x to ball.x and just change all of these paddles to balls. It should be exactly the same because it's a rectangle. Let's give that a go. There we go. There's our ball. But as you can see, when we move the paddle, the ball still stays in its original location. So we'll have to update that. So back in our loop function, we'll need to do an update ball here. Time delta, that's correct. Head down to where we did our update for the paddle. Create a function called update ball, which takes a delta as well. We'll need, to, in a similar way that we've updated the paddle position, we can do the same thing for the ball position. So ball.x plus equals ball.xv times the delta. And we'll need to do the same thing for the y, so ball.y plus equals ball dot yv times the delta. And then we just need to move the stationary ball, don't we? Move the stationary, stationary ball with the paddle. So how can we tell when the ball is stationary? Well, it won't have any y velocity, will it? So if ball dot yv equals zero, that means it's not bouncing currently we can safely set it to equal, so ball.x will equal the paddle.x. It should move with the paddle. Let's give that a go. Moving the ball, moving the paddle I should say, and the ball is moving with it. Great. Now we need some way to start the ball in motion. So on the original game I believe there was a serve button. So how about we go up to our key down and we'll create uh, another case here. Now how about when they push the space bar, so that's 32, case 32, space bar, and that will serve the ball. So we'll create a function called serve, uh, it won't take any parameters. Let's go down and create that just after new game. So function serve, not server. So let's serve the ball in a random, at a random angle. So random angle, let's say it's between 100, well between 45 and 135 degrees. So that's at a 90 degree cone above the paddle. 
So let angle equal math.random multiplied by the range of that, which is 90 degrees. So in radians, that's math.pi divided by 2 plus the offset, which is 45 degrees. So math.pi divided by 4. And we'll need to apply that angle. We'll need to apply the ball's speed. So how about we create a method, a function called apply ball speed, because we'll need to change the angle later. It'll take an angle as a parameter. So head up the top, let's write that now. Function apply ball speed with an angle. Uh, we'll need to update the x and y velocities. So update the x and y velocities of the ball. So ball.xv will equal the ball speed multiplied by the cosine of that angle, if you know your trigonometry. And similarly, the y component, the y velocity, will be the ball speed times the sine of that angle. Let's give that a go. So we've got a ball, hit the spacebar. Oops, uh, what's going on there? I know what I've done, I always do this. I forget that the y direction is negative on the screen, so we have to do minus ball speed for the y v. Let's give that a go. Great. Oh, I see a bug. If I keep pushing the space button, I continually serve the ball, so I'll have to fix that up. And also we'll have to apply the bounce on the walls too. So back in our serve function, uh, we don't want to allow the serve to occur during motion, so ball already in motion. So if the ball's yv doesn't equal zero, that means it's moving upwards or downwards, doesn't it? So we don't want to be able to serve in that situation. So we can just return. Let's give that a go. So moving that, that's fine. Hit the spacebar, we serve. I'm continually hitting the spacebar, it's not changing the direction of the ball. Great, that looks to be working. So down in our update ball function here, just before we handle that move the stationary ball part, uh, let's uh, bounce the ball. So bounce the ball off the walls. So the left wall, so if the ball's x position is less than the wall, uh, plus half the width of the ball, so ball.width, times 0 0.5, then we'll want to set the x position to that value. Oops. And we'll want to change the direction of the x direction. So ball.xv will equal minus uh, ball.xv. So it'll bounce the opposite direction. Uh, similarly for the right, so else if ball.x is greater than the canvas width minus the wall minus the ball width, half the ball width that is. Then we'll want to do a similar thing, we'll want to set the x position to that. Just change the sign there to equals. And we'll also want to switch the x position so that it bounces in the opposite direction. And finally for the top, so else if, it'll be similar to this one up here. So else if the ball's y position is less than the wall plus the ball's height times 0.5, which is the ball, ball's width because it's a square, we'll want to set the ball y to that value. Ball y will equal that value. And we'll want to change the ball's y v to the opposite. So ball yv will equal minus ball yv. Let's give that a go. Serve the ball, it should bounce off the top. Great, is it going to bounce off the side? Yes. And do that again for the other side. Great. Bouncing off everything, that seems to be working. So next we'll need to add some bounce to our paddle, won't we? So just below we'd like to set up the paddle bounce. 
So bounce off the paddle. So if the ball's Y position is greater than the top of the paddle, so paddle dot Y minus half the height of the paddle, paddle dot H times 0 0.5 minus half the ball's height, ball dot height times 0 0.5. If all of that's true and the ball's Y position is less than the paddle's Y position, so that means the ball hasn't passed the paddle yet. And we have to take into consideration the X position. The ball's X position is greater than the paddle's X position. So this will be the left hand side. So we'll have to subtract half the paddle's width minus paddle dot width times 0 0.5 minus half the ball's width. So ball dot width times 0 0.5. And we could probably just copy that. And the ball X is greater, sorry, the ball's X is less than the paddle X plus half the width plus half the width of the ball. So if all of that is true, let me just get rid of these parentheses. So if all of that is true, we'd like to set the Y to the top of the paddle. So that'll just be that first statement there ball y will equal all of that. And we'll need to change the direction of the ball. So ball.yv will equal minus ball.yv. Let's give that a go. So we've got our ball, shoot it up. Let's see if we can defend it with our paddle. Yep, it bounced off that okay. Uh, just make sure that it can miss me. Yes, it missed me. Let's start that again and try again, bounce, and it's bouncing as we'd expect. It's bouncing perfectly. Let it fall through again, make sure that it's not going to do anything silly. Yep, it looks fine. So what happens when the ball passes the paddle? Well, we'll have to set up something to handle that. Let's call that out of bounds. So handle out of bounds. So if the ball's Y position is greater than the the canvas height, canvas.height, then, well, we can just call a function out of bounds. Let's go set that up. Just above serve there. Function out of bounds. We'll leave ourselves a to do here, to do out of bounds. And just for testing purposes, let's start a new game. So every time we go past the paddle, it should start a new game. Let's test that. So just make sure that we can bounce first. Yes. And now what if, what if we miss the ball? Great. It's restarts. Perfect. Uh, there's only one issue I can think of, and this will probably be the last thing that we do for this video. Currently the ball is bouncing perfectly. That means it will never sort of deviate from that angle and we may have problems destroying all the blocks. So we'll have to add some randomizing angle for each bounce. So let's do that now. Now let's make sure that, yep, that restarts. So head down to our update ball function, just where we're bouncing off the paddle. So inside there, we need to modify the angle based off some arbitrary factor, based off, let's call it ball spin some metaphorical ball spin. Uh, so let's get the current angle first. So let angle equal, to get the current angle, we just have to find the uh, inverse tan of our yv and xv. So math.a tan is the inverse tan. Because we're in coordinate space, we, can, we should use a tan two. It takes the y value, which is the ball dot yv. And the x value is the ball dot x v. But remembering that y direction is in the opposite direction, so we should use minus there. So that'll give our angle, good. Now we want to modify that angle. So angle plus equals, how about we modify it by plus or minus 45 degrees. So we can do a randomizer there. Math dot random modified, sorry, times uh, math dot pi 
divide by 2, that's 90 degrees, uh, minus 45 degrees. So math.pi uh, divide by 4. All of that multiplied by this random factor. We'll call that ball spin. We'll go create that soon. And then we'll need to apply this angle to the speed. So we've got a function for that. Apply ball speed, that takes an angle. And that should modify the x and y velocities appropriately. Sorry, we should uh, bracket all of that before we apply the multiply by the ball spin. That should be okay. So let's go up and create this uh, constant. Just under ball speed, we'll have ball spin. Uh, let's test the extremes first. So this will be the ball deflection in effect, deflection off the paddle, where zero equals no spin and one equals high spin. Okay, let's give that a go. So there should be no spin at this point in time. The ball should bounce how we expect it to bounce. So bounce, that looks okay. Just one more time. Yeah, it seems to be bouncing normally. Let's change that to the extreme. Give it one spin, which should be a lot of spin. So the ball is bouncing. Didn't notice it there, but let's try again. It is random. Yes, you can see it there, it bounced suddenly upwards and then to the side. Okay, that seems to be okay. Let's set it to something not so extreme, say 0.2. Right, so the ball's going slightly to the left. It's gone back on itself there, that's good. Yeah, so the deflection is only slight, but that's all we want. If the deflection is too wild, the game will become unplayable. But we do need to change the path of the ball, otherwise some bricks will become untouchable. So that looks like a fairly decent uh, middle ground. The only issue I can think of, through randomness, the, um, the path of the, the angle of the ball might become too great, and it might even start going downwards, which is not what we want. So we'll have to add some cap to the angle. Let's do that now. So down in our apply ball speed function, we'll need to do some checking on that angle there. So we'll keep the angle between 30 and say 150 degrees. Anything less than that or greater than that will probably become too steep and too hard to play. So let's say if angle is less than math.pi divide by 6, that's 30 degrees, then we just want to set the angle to equal that. Angle will equal math pi divided by 6, else if uh, angle is greater than math.pi times 5 sixths, then we'll want to do a similar thing and set that to equal that. So angle will equal math, math pi times 5 sixths. This will be a bit hard to test, so how about we put in some console logs here. Console log, I will call this the intended angle. Intended angle will equal the past angle. And we'll do something similar after we've applied this angle here. And we'll call that the uh, output angle or something like that. And we'll have to go up and change our ball spin to something extreme. Let's set it to say 1 and give it a go. Open our log, our console log. Restart. Okay. So the intended angle is 2. Actually, I might just change that to be in uh, degrees so that we all understand it. So head back down to that apply here. We'll say that's the angle uh, divided by math.pi. So I'm just converting to degrees here, multiplied by 180. I'll just copy that and put it, oops, put that down here as well. Okay, let's give that a go. 
So the intended angle is 75 degrees. The intended angle is 104. So it's, unless it's less than 30 or greater than 150, this shouldn't do anything. It should stay the same. 121, 121. Hopefully. There we go. So the intended angle was 21 degrees and the output angle was 30. So it's been capped there. And you can test it yourself to see if the 181 works or not, but I think it would be. I think it will work fine. Okay, that will do us for today's tutorial. So we created the paddle and the bouncy ball. In the next tutorial, we'll focus on creating the bricks and smashing through the bricks. Okay, until then, talk to you then. Bye.